Welcome to yet another episode of the Legacy Building Leaders TV show, where we feature men and women who have made a legacy contribution in the different areas of their calling and specialization. In today's show, we are graced by Reverend Dr. Ananias K. Nyanjaya, who is a legacy building leader in the area of bereavement counseling. My name is Reverend Dr. Ananias Nyanjaya. I was born in Kwekwe, and then my parents uh, relocated to Zambia, where I did my education and also worked there before responding to the call to study theology for the ministry. As I was studying theology, I also embarked on my studies. I did uh, my studies in counseling and also did my studies in practical theology with the University of Pretoria. Whilst I was in Pretoria, I was made to write a dissertation. And when I was looking for a topic, I researched and um, at the end discovered that I was supposed to write on grief, suppression of grief among, among males. So I wrote, I started researching, and when I was researching, it's when I discovered myself that I did not process grief when my father died. My father died when bidding farewell to uh, at the death of my young brother. When he was throwing in the gravel, in the grave, he shook and got sick from there. Then bedridden, seven days later, he died. And when he died, I took control of the funeral. I did everything, cancelled people, and also made all the arrangements. I didn't even drop a tear. So that in itself, I didn't know that it had some impact in my life. I discovered that I was supposed to cry. So four years later, after the burial of my father, that's the time I cried for more than two hours before I started writing my dissertation. I discovered that uh, through my research that most men are like my father and I was like most men because I didn't express my feelings when my father died. Instead, I took control. And in the process, the grief itself ate me and disturbed me. So I was more of a wounded healer. I was a person who was healing and preaching at funerals and guiding other people, but I was wounded until I cried. So that's the time I wrote the book, A Suppression of Grief That Leads to Death. Uh, after that, I came back to Zimbabwe and when I came here, I started uh, working with people and also holding seminars uh, on grieving. Because when I realized my own problem, I discovered that I was supposed also to share with those men who are grieving. So I've held seminars for males, for females, for boys who are grieving. And even the congregation, at times I hold a, a memorial service at the end of each year today that, help, uh, that helps uh, all people who lost their loved, one, loved ones but did not find time to express them, either because they were uh, breadwinners or because they were firstborns like me. So it, it is important today that I've written more than seven books. And in all these books, the, the issue of grieving is there. I've realized that it has even killed a lot of men in Zimbabwe and even in Zambia. And also 
it has also affected men, women, who are at times told that since you are the only you know, child or daughter here, be strong, be a man. And men, people, a lot of women have tried to copy men, and I'm discouraging that because I've seen the dangers of copying men who pretend that they don't have pain when they are going through pain. So that's why I talked about the wounded healer. Deal with yourself in order to deal with other people. So because I've written these books, I've dealt with myself first in order to help the community. I'm helping the community in that way because when I help the community, I'm real and I understand. I've also discouraged people to say at the funeral, let's celebrate at the death of someone. If you have not celebrated a birthday for someone, why talk about celebration at the death of a person or at a person who could not, who cannot talk to you, you can't celebrate. So at times people, because of modernization or, you know, maybe getting drawing from other people, platforms, they talk of, they try to minimize death. So I'm saying every man should not minimize death. Every person should not min minimize death. Instead, he or she has to cry in order to heal. Even when you are divorced, you have to cry. You have to express. If you are heartbroken, you have to, uh, to express. That is painful. Don't, be, don't say, I'm a man, I'll find another one. Because that relationship, it was already an investment. So we cry because of an investment. And those investments are very important. They, we carry those investments wherever we go, even when we lead in different places. So it's important to take note of that. We've listened to the legacy building leadership story of Reverend Dr. Ananias Nyanjaya and how he has built his legacy as an author speaker and counselor in the area of processing grief. In the next segment, we are going to be joined by our guest, Reverend Dr. Nyanjaya, as he's joined by two young people. Because legacy building leaders influence and shape the next generation of leaders. My name is Ezo Chikodora, and I'm an upper six student studying commercials at Wise House School. Today, I have a few questions for you relating to grief during this COVID-19 pandemic. My first question is, since you're a well-known published author, you've written books relating to religion, church ministry, and family issues. How have you managed to instill discipline within yourself to achieve that? I'm pleased to meet you, uh, Hazel. Um, what is important uh, in my writing is uh, the discipline that I crafted in my life, that the discipline of taking note of what is important and what is more important and what is less important. And those things I normally every evening, I normally think of what is important for tomorrow for me, what is very important and what is less important. So all those things are there in a day. So I zero on what is very important. I start with what is very important. And when I do that, I have to do, when I wake up, I have to do those things that are very important, then come to what uh, are important and then less important because I have to accommodate all those things because there are some things that are less important just for fun and they are very important for, uh, to complete a day. Hi Reverend, my name is Joe Mareza from Nyatsume College, representing my school, representing my clubs, Toastmasters uh, and Internet Club. Uh, my question was that uh, many young people are facing depression in the grief in their homes and then they don't know what to do about it and now they are doing a uh, suicide and uh, 
drugs because they've lost hope. So what best advice would you give to them? Thank you, Joel. I think it's true. These days, a, a lot of young people are indulging in all sorts of things because of various uh, things that are happening in their lives. Uh, my advice to young people is that they have to identify survivors of every situation or the situation that they're in, then engage and discuss. And also, they have to seek counseling uh, from even the, the, their peers themselves. Because it's important that uh, they discuss these issues without being judged or be blamed for what they are feeling or what they are going through. So it's important to find that a time and space to discuss issues that are affecting the young people. The problem is uh, maybe the socialization where people say, you should not say this and try to stop you. Don't allow anyone to stop you. Say what you want to a friend, a person who could help you or who can help you. My second question is, you talked about suppressing grief. How can you express it then? Grief can be expressed in many ways. But let me give you two ways. The first one is talking about it and being honest with you. And the second one is uh, expressing it emotionally. If it means crying, you have to cry. No one should not stop you to cry. And if you want to talk about it, no one should not stop you to talk about what you are feeling. So it's very important to express grief in that way, by talking or by expressing it emotionally. But don't harm anyone. It's for yourself. It's for your healing. My second question was that uh, due to the pandemic, uh, I think we have all noticed that uh, it has costed many lives. And uh, also due, due to the pandemic, there are now restrictions uh, because uh, many, there is a certain number of people who should uh, attend the funeral. And the many people don't get the chance to say their last goodbyes to their loved ones. Uh, and then those people are now facing grief. Uh, many, they are facing a very bad situation at the moment. So what advice would you give to those people? Uh, thank you again. He I think it's important to take note that uh, the Africans have got a method of caring for each other when there's a death. And these things now, because of the restrictions, they are restricted themselves. They cannot carry them. For, for example, they can no longer uh, do body viewing. They are not supposed to be, to be hugged or to cry on the shoulder of someone and all those things. The people should allow that period to pass. And when that period has passed, they have to create time to cry, to find time to talk about the death, also to express their pain in a, you know, a conducive environment, an environment that is accepting them, that they are all grieving, even as a family. You can come together, say today now, uh, let's talk about it. Even after two months, uh, after burial, you have to meet again and talk about it because the closure is important. The discussion to share as a family is important in these situations. And also, it is important that for you to process grief uh, because you didn't do what you are supposed to do, you should, you should also play some music that will help you to heal. And if you feel that you didn't express uh, you know, grief and you feel you are strong, you can play even people, you know, songs like those of Mutukudzi, who can provoke you, the late uh, legend Mutukudzi, who can provoke you. That's Rufu uh, Dima Zongonyas. It will help you when you think of uh, the, the song, the, that song and the words that are there. Truly, when you are thinking about it, when you are alone, you will cry. And that will help you, especially when you identify other people who are going through the same. Call each other, friends, let's talk about this. And also, let's find time to cry. 
I have people who gather after even three months, even those people who come, when they come from the diaspora, they come and they start talking about, to talk, to talk about the, their loss, which they didn't attend. And I encourage them to meet other friends so that they would cry together without blaming each other. We have listened to that engagement between our guest, Reverend Dr. Nyanjaya, in his engagement with the young people who were asking pertinent questions in the area of processing grief as young people. In the next segment, we are going to listen to the anatomy of Reverend Dr. Nyanjaya's legacy as a bereavement counselor, researcher, author, and speaker. So Reverend Dr. Nyanjaya, um, let's, let's look very closely now at your, your legacy in terms of uh, helping people to process grief. But also, we are talking about this subject at a time when the nation is grieving. If we look at the COVID-19 experience, families are grieving, uh, organizations are grieving, communities are grieving, and, and that's, that's the context in which we are discussing this. Um, now, let's, 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 let's bring this closer home now. What, what would you consider to be the defining features of your own legacy in this perspective? It's um, caring for people who are grieving by writing material so that they could use uh, in times of grief and also making sure that leaders in the church, even in the community, are empowered to care for each other in times of pain. So it's important for me to give material, also to give training, because every leader in my church uh, is trained before he or she embarks on leadership because it's important to care for people when you are trained yourself. And normally, I, want, I train people first that they have to deal with themselves first before they deal with other people. So, I mean, to me, uh, grief is real, just like COVID is real. So when I'm talking about uh, grieving, a uh, it goes, it affects all facets of life. And I consider my writing and my teachings to be very, very important for those situations and people. So, so you have uh, created, you have invested in building resources, like you are saying, yeah. to help people to cope with grief. What, what, what are the implications of having unprocessed grief. Thank you. Uh, the implications are that a wounded person wounds others. A grieving person causes others to grieve. And also, uh, it destroys families. Because it's uh, like people, a lot of men who have lost their mothers, at times, they tend to be at loggerheads or they tend to divorce. Some of them are divorcing their wives because they feel that uh, those issues that they were discussing to, together during their honeymoon about the wrongs of their parents, now when the parent is not there, they t tend to grieve and even accuse each other of what happened or not caring. Uh, for those moments. So it's, it's important that uh, we take note that those people who are not grieving or who have not grieved are very dangerous to the society. Even leaders in the country, leaders in the church, I've, I know I've counseled pastors 
who are so rough or inconsiderate when it comes to managing funerals. At times they push people and rush people that let's finish off this person is dead. Why are you crying and doing all those things? Because they didn't deal with their own grief. So when they see a crying man, they identify with the, that person and also that person puts them in a weaker position, reminds them that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So there are many people who have not cried or who have not expressed grief because of their portfolios in the, in the society. Some are going to you know, seminars. After burying today, tomorrow they are flying to Dubai, America, and they, 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 are, they act as nothing happened back home. And there are people who are grieving. At times they just drop dead because they didn't deal with what they've bottled up. Now, now let's look at, at the young people. You, you were talking to young people as well here. Um, sometimes there's a society, even at a funeral, even before COVID, I noticed when there's a funeral, uh, we tend to give the focus on the parent or the elders. Those are the chief mourners. Yeah. And, and I've even been to funerals where you find actually the children are even outside. And, and, and people... Uh, will focus on comforting the mother, the, 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 the surviving mother or the surviving father or the elders, you know, and, and, and the children are on the sidelines. How can we as a society help young people to process grief? Yeah, it's because of the burden that the one who has lost a loved one will carry. And they believe, in the society, they believe that the, the children will be cared by this person, so we have to deal with this person. And yet, the children also care for their mother or father who has been left mm -hmm. widowed or uh, widowed because they have to care for each other. So children have to find space also. They have to relate, they should have their own you know, groups where they share their pain without uh, anyone blaming them. It's important that they have to meet and also realize that they are in pain. So Dr. Nyanjaya, it's, it's very clear that um, this issue of processing grief, it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's not just a COVID issue. It's, it's, it's an, it was an issue before COVID. Uh, it will be an issue beyond COVID. And we want to thank you for your resourcefulness, uh, you know, in helping you know, our people to process grief, which is a very important subject. Legacy building leaders are game changers and solution providers. And in this episode, we have listened to the legacy building contribution of Reverend Dr. Ananias Nyanjaya in the area of processing grief, how much he has researched, written, counseled, trained, and empowered many in communities around our nation in the area of processing grief. I would like to invite you to nominate any other game changers and solution providers that you may know of by sending out their names on the details on the screen. Let's meet again next Friday at 5.30 in another episode of the Legacy Building Leaders TV show.